Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about the way I view progressive overload personally as a coach, and I see it a little bit different from the way a lot of people see it. I don't view progressive overload itself as the driver of muscle growth, but rather the evidence of it. And let me explain here. Uh, because the problem we have is that if you're always pushing the progressive overload end, you're eventually just going to be hitting failure on your sets, uh, multiple sets to failure, everything to failure, in which case you just burn out. You will run into recovery problems. You'll be able to use less volume. And quite frankly, uh, the research shows that train taking a set to failure doesn't really produce significantly or any meaningful more growth than taking a set, you know, two or three reps away from failure. Just why when I've had people bring this up, uh, and this is almost worthy of its own video, you know, they're like, well, couldn't you just do less sets and take them to failure instead of doing whatever your five sets, two reps short, three reps short, or whatever, wouldn't you get m more growth with less volume? And it's like, no, no, you wouldn't. Because set for set, it's, it's almost negligible as far as there being any difference in hypertrophy, but those extra sets do cause measurable hypertrophy, usually up to a point. So the answer there is no, not at all. But that being said, the reason I say that it's more of evidence of growth is, is here's why. Let's go back to that other point. If you are spending any period of time and you're not a novice anymore, you've made your new gains. If you're spending any period of time with say, starting with three or four reps in reserve, and taking a given weight and maybe you pick up a rep here or there you know it gets a little better over time if you're a somewhat advanced lifter that's going to be very 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 slow on each exercise right it's going to be very slow in other words um, whatever movement let's say you've been doing 135 for five sets of 10 on an exercise right just because you added five pounds and let's say now your fifth set's right at failure or you're having to rest pause to do the 10th rep well you're probably not causing any more muscle growth you're probably not because you're not really doing anything extra in, in other words the stimulus was already sufficient you know if you're doing five sets of 10 and you're three reps in reserve on a movement you're already stimulating significant hypertrophy adding a little more weight doesn't mean anything if you add a little more weight, all that that means is that, and you're able to complete the same reps and sets, but they're a hair harder near the end. Well, all that means is that you had reps in reserve, but you were still within your growth window. You're still within your growth window. Now, if you start adding five pounds, 10 pounds, and they're just as easy, that's now evidence of growth. But is it really stimulating any more hypertrophy? And the answer is no, not really. We can spend uh, extended periods of time with one exercise to where we're not increasing weight or reps on it and still be seeing significant muscle growth because it's that one exercise. And if we are less than five reps from failure on our sets, even with that setup, what happens? It, it means we are stimulating sufficient muscle growth. Okay, it is a combination of mechanical tension, fatigue, and exertion that stimulates the adaptation process that causes muscle growth. And if we're doing multiple sets, you know, three, four, or five sets of an exercise, and we're in that range, we're stimulating growth no matter what, whether we've increased weight or not. The only time the increasing the weight matters is when we've now gained enough muscle mass that we can no longer be within that range. In other words, if all your sets are five reps in reserve or more because you've gained muscle and you don't add weight to the bar, well, yeah, then you're going to stop seeing an adaptation. But I think it's also important to keep in mind that we're looking at the overall stimulus of a workout. Hopefully, none of you who are advanced lifters are only doing one lift for a muscle group right hopefully you're not you're probably doing at least two every workout 
So in that context, if any of those movements go up, we've seen progression. It doesn't have to be on every movement. It doesn't have to be on every movement. But again, we come over to that other point. If we use the same reps, sets, and weight for several weeks, and we don't increase it, but it is inside of that measurable zone of, of where we know our sweet spot is for causing muscle growth, then we don't actually have to have progress on it to see adaptation. And it only becomes a problem when we adapt, which means gaining muscle, gaining strength, to a point to where we no longer are at that threshold. In which case you have to add weight, but in this case, was adding weight the driver? No. The actual workload was the driver. Right? The tension, mechanical tension, the metabolic fatigue. Total workload. Okay, that combination is what got us there without increasing or having progressive overload. So needing the progressive overload itself is signs of hypertrophy in this case. And it's just a different way of looking at it and understanding it, particularly understanding it in, in the context of using multiple exercises, multiple sets, all these things. AMRAPs and things like that are, again, useful for judging our progress. In other words, uh, you know, let's say you're you're doing an AMRAP to see where you are, but keep in mind, we're not growing that wall off of a single set. We're not growing that much at all, really. I mean, relative to what we could be doing, it's still the, the sum of the work and the workout that causes the growth. But an AMRAP will tell you that you've made progress. In other words, if you can pick up one more rep with 315 on an exercise, versus what you previously did, and then pick up another rep, you know, a month later, three weeks later, whatever it is. Well, that's definite evidence of muscle growth. Right? It's evidence of muscle growth, which was, will, of course, cause strength carryover, right? Because hypertrophy is the primary component for each individual uh, regarding their strength ceiling. It raises your strength ceiling. Now, the strength itself is a skill. It's a skill, but it is largely based upon those physical structures of the body. But again, all of that being said, in these cases, we're seeing progress as evidence, our way to test if we have grown or not. And it's a great way to do that. But it's not necessarily the primary driver of it. And there's a big, big difference. And if you are doing all that stuff that I said and you're not making progress, you're either not training enough, which for a lot of you is unlikely, you are not recovering enough, you're not sleeping enough, you don't have good enough fatigue management, your food isn't where it needs to be. That's usually the cause. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys next time.